so my name is Emil, and I'm gonna be going over some of the basic neuroanatomy for Neuro One. So when you're thinking about the nervous system, it's important to create like an organizational map, and that's what I'm gonna do for you guys. So <clears throat> kind of follow along and draw with me, and then just kind of repeat that drawing, and it'll help you kind of get these um, kind of pathways uh, memorized. Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do <clears throat> is I'm gonna draw out the central nervous system, which consists of the brain, the brain stem, and the spinal cord. So this is the central nervous system. Here's your brain. There's the thalami, or the each of these is the thalamus. This is the brainstem. So brainstem is broken into three parts. This is the midbrain. This is the pons. And this is the medulla. And this is the spinal cord. So we're gonna talk about it in terms of two different pathways. <clears throat> the way that the peripheral nervous system talks to the central nervous system is called the sensory. Or afferent pathway. And the way that the sensory, the central nervous system talks to the peripheral nervous system called the motor, or E, efferent pathway. So on this side is everything sensory, on this side is gonna be everything motor. So when we talk about sensation, we talk about you know touch, pain, um, feeling temperature, vibration sense, all those different you know sensations and feelings are gonna be on this side of the page, and then everything motor is gonna be on that side. So when we break down your sensory pathways, we're gonna talk about these different tracks. So we're gonna break it down in terms of the face and the body. Okay? So the sensation to the face is gonna be supplied by the trigeminal thalamic track. Okay? And this is cranial nerve five. All right, trigeminal nerve is gonna be all that sensation to the face, to the thalamus. Okay, specifically the VPM, ventro-posteromedial component of the thalamus. And this goes to the cortex. Okay, so the trigeminal thalamic is gonna be kind of your main pathway involved with the sensation of the face. Now to the body, there's two different pathways, and these are the main ones. So there's your dorsal, column, medial, lemniscus, and there's your spinal, thalamic. Two pathways. The dorsal column is gonna be in charge of gonna doing vibration, proprioception, pressure, spinothalamic is going to do pain, Temperature. And fine touch. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna talk about the two different pathways in two different colors. Now, first one I'm gonna talk about is this dorsal column
dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway. So this is basically how your <clears throat> body communicates to the brain that it's feeling these specific sensations that I'm talking about. So with these pathways, the big thing to remember is that it's gonna take three nerves to get up to the brain, okay? So follow along with me. So first thing, here's a tuning fork, right? And it emits these vibrations. So here's a finger. And within the finger are these specialized um, dendrites, dendritic endings, basically in order to feel. So you have like, you know, Piscinian corpuscles and Merkos corpuscles and all these free endings. These are all like these modified dendritic fibers that are specialized to feel these specific sensations. And these nerve fibers and um, are within the, you know, um, epidermis, dermis, hypodermis. It's kind of con contained within all, you know, within the skin. So now, here's the nerve coming out. So here's now the axon. And here's the myelin sheath. Now this nerve, like all these like nerve fibers are bundled up and it's carried within the actual peripheral nerve. Now we're gonna get a, a cross section here of the spinal cord. And the nerve comes up like this. So we're gonna follow the nerve. You know, I feel the sensation, the synapse travels along and you have these you know, depolarizes and it travels along this axon, you know, one direction, moves this way, kind of travels up this nerve, and then contained within here is the cell body. And this is in the dorsal root ganglia. Now this is called a pseudo-unipolar uh, neuron because it's got this bi-directional axon. So there's an axon here coming down this way, and then the axon continues, and the cell body is just kind of sitting right here, kind of near the what you would consider like the middle um, of the nerve. So then the axon continues here, okay? Then it's gonna go into this um, posterior column. So dorsal, AKA posterior column, it makes sense. When you think of the spinal cord, right? This is the posterior column back here. And so it's gonna travel upwards, okay? Now, I'm gonna do another cross section. So here's the medulla. Okay, so this is the caudomedulla. So then the nerve continues upwards, and it goes here within the caudomedulla, and it goes and it synapses, it makes its first synapse here. And this is called the nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus, okay? So these are nuclei, basically where these cell bodies are contained, and that's where the first synapse happens. So you notice that it's still on the same side of the spinal cord, okay? Now once it makes that first synapse, the second nerve fiber is gonna basically cross right over, okay? And that's called decusating. It's gonna cross right over, it's gonna continue to go upwards towards the VPL of the thalamus. Okay, now I'm gonna show it kind of on this image here, right? So we talk about how, again, the dorsal column's in black. It's gonna come up, it travels all the way up the spinal cord on the same side, goes here to the medulla, has its first synapse, right? At that nucleus gracilius or cuneatus, depending on whether it's the upper or lower extremity. Here's the second nerve. It crosses right over here in the medulla, and it continues all the way up to the thalamus, projects up to the thalamus and makes its second synapse. And the third nerve is here, and that projects to the cortex, and it's specifically the primary somatosensory.
cortex. So the idea is that there's three nerves. The first one enters here, so it's all the way from the beginning. It enters, right, goes all the way in, synapses at within the medulla at the caudal, uh, within the caudal medulla at the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus. So it goes there, and then it basically decusates or crosses over, and then it goes up to the thalamus on the contralateral side, and then synapses again, and then the third fiber is here, so let's count. So the first one's here, right? First one's continuing to travel all the way up. Again, it hasn't made any synapse. So the first one continues all the way upwards. The second one is here, right? So the second one is within the medulla, right? Crosses over, goes up towards the thalamus. So the second one is right here. Starting here in the medulla, going up to the opposite side of the thalamus. And the number three is right here. And that goes to the primary somatosensory cortex um, of the brain. And that's basically how we perceive, um, you know, vibration, proprioception, and pressure. And that's how that pathway works. Now the spinothalamic pathway I'm gonna do in blue. So here's a nail. Here's a flame. It's the same idea. Here's finger. And these modified nerve endings, it's gonna come out like this. Now, the spinothalamic, you have to consider the fact that there is two kind of main nerve endings. So we talk about it just like this one where it's myelinated. See this myelin sheath. Consisting of these Schwann cells. So it's gonna travel and jump. Okay, and you also have unmyelinated fibers. They basically just have like a naked axon carrying the synapse all the way through. Again, it's, you know, unidirectional. You have, you know, depolarization of the cell and it's basically kind of conducting this signal all the way through, almost like a cable wire. And let's show them kind of composed in the same kind of nerve sheath. So the ones that are myelinated are called alpha or A delta fibers. Okay? So these are myelinated. And then these C fibers are unmyelinated. So it makes sense that if it's myelinated, it's probably going to be faster. So think A comes before C. So when we talk about pain, we talk about first and second pain. First pain is like these A delta fibers. Second pain is these C fibers. So myelinated is faster, unmyelinated is slower. Now it's going to travel through this nerve sheath. So again, same kind of cross section of a spinal cord. Now these fibers are gonna do something very similar. So the first fiber is gonna run this way. It's gonna travel, travel. Same thing, it's gonna go here. And there's that cell body within the dorsal root ganglia. Travels, it comes in. Now it does something very different. Now it kind of enters here and makes its first synapse. So it's on this ipsilateral, so ipsy means same, so on the same side of the spinal cord, wherever, you know, let's call this, you know, right. So here it's gonna be, you know, synapsing. So now here's the second, it's gonna go like this, it's gonna travel, or aka decusate over, right there. So that's gonna be called the anterior white commissure. And then it's gonna go up, so spinothalamic sits kinda of here out in the front, and then it's gonna travel. So now what's the difference? The dorsal column, it was on the same side of the spinal cord all the way up. It didn't cross over until all the way up here in the medulla. Whereas this spinothalamic, it does its first synapse immediately and it crosses over immediately. So think like right after the first synapse is, 
you know, and then right after that is when it crosses over. Dorsal column doesn't do it all the way until the end when it gets into the brainstem. Here it's going to cross over immediately and then go up. So it's going to go up, go up, up, up. Continue, and it's headed to the same place, the VPL. Except the difference is, is now it's it has crossed over immediately and it's running on the opposite side of the spinal cord. Everything has to get to the other side of the brain. So they all got to cross, it's just a matter of when. So now on this spinal cord, we'll show the same thing. So, so there's blue nerve kind of coming in, right? First synapse happens here. It crosses in the anterior white commissure. And then it's headed on the other side of the spinal cord. So it keeps going, going, going all the way to the thalamus. Same thing here. It's going to synapse. And the third one is up there. So now let's do it for the spinothalamic tract. The first nerve is here, okay? The second nerve is basically right after it synapses here in the kind of dorsal region of the gray matter. So this is number two. And number two courses all the way up. So this is all number two. And then number three, same thing. It's gonna be just, they're identical as far as where they're starting, where they're ending. The third nerve starts at the VPL of the thalamus and goes up to the primary somatosensory cortex. So these all are three nerves, two synapses. It's a matter of this one for the most part travels ipsilaterally and the spinothalamic, for the most part, travels contralaterally. So it decusates right at that level or one to two, kind of above. Um, so for the most part, you know, when someone damages their dorsal column, it's usually gonna be on the same side. So if like I damage the left side, or in this case, the right side of this spinal cord, I'm gonna have right-sided deficits because it's basically running along the same side. The spinothalamic is tricky because if I damage like the right side of my body, it means that it was on the left side of the spinal cord because this this nerve is running along the opposite side of the spinal cord. So dorsal column, think, you know, same-sided lesion. Spinothalamic, think opposite side of the spinal cord. So always remember where they decusate and that kind of tells you where the lesion is. And that's, again, one of the biggest things with neuroanatomy is localizing lesions. So this is the sensory pathway. When someone's complaining of sensory deficits, right, um, they're gonna have numbness. You know, patient will be com coming in complaining of so Signs and symptoms are gonna be, they're gonna complain of numbness, tingling, maybe even burning, but you know, sensations. And then so the idea behind this is this is, you know, um, paresthesia, okay? Whereas, you know, you're gonna see motor deficits is um, paresis. So this is what the patient will present with. Now, on this side is gonna be very similar. Now we're gonna talk about the motor deficits. So now we're gonna do the same thing here. So now this is the motor pathway. And so this is gonna be um, all of your kind of movement. Um, so same idea, we're gonna do face first. Okay, so this is gonna be called a cortico. Bulbar pathway. The main cranial nerves that it's going to innervate is cranial nerves three, four, three, four, and six in order to do your extraocular muscles for eye movement. Cranial nerves five, seven, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, and these are for muscles specific muscles, not the eye muscles, but other ones. So this is like your muscles of mastication. This is gonna be the muscles of facial expression. And this is gonna be for your gag and swallowing, nine and 10. 11 is gonna be doing your shoulder, and 12 uh, does your tongue. So these are all the kind of the muscles that are innervated um, for the cortical bulbar tract. So now, again, here's the body. 
And this is gonna be one pathway that's in charge of all your voluntary movement. This is called your cortico. Spinal tract. So this one is gonna be in charge of movement. So now, the important thing to remember is the name tells you where it starts and where it's headed. So you look over here, dorsal column medial lemniscus. It starts off in the dorsal column of the spinal cord, and then it's gonna to go to the medial lemniscus, which is kind of within the brainstem, okay? Um, it's that region of cells. Spinothalamic starts at the spine, right? Spinal cord goes to the thalamus. Okay, so it tells you where it starts and where it's headed. Same thing here, corticospinal tells you where it starts and where it's headed. So it starts in the cortex, right, in the brain, and then goes to the spinal cord, which makes sense, right? Because we talked about everything for the peripheral nervous system. It's either afferent, so your nerves to your brain, or your brain to your nerves. In this case, because this is your motor pathway, it's gonna go from your brain to your spinal cord and then consequently to your nerves. So if you're ever forgetting, you know, what does the track do, think, you know, t it, this tells you where it starts and where it's headed, okay? Also something to consider is the involvement of the thalamus. So I like to think about it like this. Anytime I'm thinking of a sensory pathway, in order for it to get to the brain, it's gotta do two things, right? It's gotta cross over like they all do, and it's gotta go through the thalamus first. So I think about it as like the brain is the president and the thalamus is, its, is the secretary. So you gotta go through the secretary first if you wanna talk to the brain. So for these sensory pathways, they all have to stop at that VPM or the VPL of the thalamus to get to the, to communicate to the brain. And then the thalamus kind of decides what projects up to the brain and what doesn't, okay? Now, it, consequently, the motor pathways, think again back to the president, does it have to go to the secretary to talk to whoever he wants to talk to? No, right? It, go, it goes straight down. So it doesn't, it basically bypasses the thalamus. So you wanna to get to the brain, you gotta go through the thalamus first. But if the brain wants to basically coordinate movement or, um, you know, or, or, or decide to voluntarily, you know, move a limb, it bypasses the thalamus, it doesn't need it. Okay. So now we're gonna draw that same pathway again and show you another cross section. So same idea, right? So you have your right. So this is your dorsal root ganglia, right? This is your dorsal root. This is your ventral root. This is your spinal nerve root. And this is gonna come out. So the idea here is now, rather than going upwards, we're gonna go back downwards. So if we assume this is the left side of the body, we have to, where does it have to originate? It's gotta start at the right side of the brain because so, everything has to cross. So we're gonna start here at the primary motor cortex. Okay, so here's where it starts. So the first nerve is here, right? So this is the cell body and the gray matter. It's gonna come downwards. And so like we said, does it have to go through the thalamus? No, it's just gonna go through this thing called the internal capsule, which is basically where all these fibers kind of come together and they just kind of create this bundle of white matter that basically just comes down. So it comes down here. Now, here in the medulla, so we'll do another cross section of the medulla here. So now at the caudal medulla, these fibers are gonna come down here and they're gonna decusate. And this is at the pyramids. Okay, so that's where they decusate. They're gonna come down, right? So again, now it's already on the opposite side. It's gonna come down all the way here. So again, we're assuming that, you know, it's continuing down that opposite side of the spinal cord. It's gonna come down. And again, all the motor components of the brain, and this is what's nice. Everything motor here is anterior, as you guys 
learn anatomy. So motors up here, sensories back here. We talked about, you know, these pathways here, they come in through the dorsal root ganglia. You know, they're posterior, they're sensory. Motor is everything anterior. So then you're gonna go to this like, you know, ventral horn and you're gonna synapse. And then now here's your second nerve. So rather than coming from the, you know, the back, this comes out the front, as all motor things do. So you come out here, and it's gonna continue outwards. And where is it headed? It's headed to a muscle. So again, still myelinated. So it descends. It's the end of this axon, right? So this is the axon terminal. So again, when it depolarizes, it gets all the way to the end of here. It goes to learn, right? So calcium rushes in. And then these vesicles that contain this neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, these vesicles go all the way to the edge here. And they're released. So they release their contents. And acetylcholine is released here. Now, where's this headed? So this goes to the end plate, the motor end plate here. The skeletal muscle. You know, biceps, brachii, any muscle you can think of that's skeletal muscle. Okay, the acetylcholine is released, it binds. To these muscarinic receptors. Okay, and these are muscarinic. Acetylcholine binds here. You have these T tubules, causes depolarization. And then again, it, it goes through this whole pathway that I'm not going to go into, but basically, calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and there's this whole cross bridge where you have actin, you know, you have the actomyosin, and you have basically, um, you know, cross cross bridging and you have the, the power stroke where you basically have the muscle contraction, but it all starts here. And the idea is, is so we said here, this was three nerves of two synapses. This is gonna be two nerves instead with one synapse in between. Okay, the way that it's broken down is the two nerves are, it's called the upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron. So the entire time it's in the spinal cord, right? Every, you know, here it's up here, it crosses. That whole time, it's going to be considered the upper motor neuron, which is nerve number one. The moment it synapses and it basically comes out as a, as a peripheral nerve, this is your lower motor neuron. And again, whether you whether you knock out the upper or the lower, you actually get opposite symptoms. So what I remember is, you know, upper, everything goes up. You get hyper-reflexive, hypertonic. Um, you get, you know, increased spasticity. Lower motor neuron, everything kind of goes down, okay? Hypotonic, um, hyporeflexive, things like that. So, you know, I'm gonna go into that in a little bit more detail later, but just the idea that there's two motor neurons, right? So this is the motor nervous system. And so it's upper and lower. And that makes sense. The higher one up is the upper and then the lower one. Now the corticospinal tract is also known as the pyramidal tract. Wait, remember that? Think, okay, where does it decusate? The medullary pyramids, okay? So this is gonna be called the pyramidal tract. And then when you think, okay, what are the, so you, you'll, you'll learn, you know, what are extra pyramidal tracts? Well, this is the pyramidal tracts. All the other ones that are coordinated in our motor function are gonna be called extra pyramidal. So, you know, EPS, extra extra pyramidal tracks. And so there's, you know, there's six of them. I'm not gonna go into detail as to what, you know, they do. But when you think pyramidal tracks, you know, think corticospinal and cortical bulbar, and then all the extra pyramidal tracks are these kind of more basic, you know, kind of primitive tracks that the body uses. So this is, you know, rubrospinal, Tectospinal, lateral, vestibulo, spinal, medial, 
Reticulospinal. Pontine. Reticulospinal. So these are considered the extra pyramidal tracts. These are the pyramidal tracts. And so these are coordinated with movement. So like I said, if someone's having, you know, vibration, proprioception, pressure, all these different things, they're gonna come off as, you know, paresthesia. So numbness, tingling are the manifestations here clinically that if there are deficits, that'll, that's what they're gonna feel. It would make sense that here instead, instead of paresthesia, it's paresis, which is weakness. Right? Now, if it's So weakness if it's partial. All right, so they have some function, but it's weak. That is specifically paresis. If there's none at all, right, they have no movement, nothing at all, that's plegia. So this is partial and this is none, or you wanna say complete, knocking out of the nerves. So you know someone's hemiplegic, you're knocking out of half the extremities, paraplegic, right? So quadriplegic, all those different things. Basically, plegia is when you have no movement at all. That's usually when you have you know brainstem lesion. If it's partial, right? Partial, so hemiparesis, hemiparesis, quadriplegic, paresis, anything associated with you know some weakness is going to manifest as something paresis. Okay, so think weakness, think numbness and tingling, sensory numbness, tingling, weakness, paresis. Okay. Now, the only other things that are basically motor, they're not going to skeletal muscle, but they're gonna be going to visceral organs, is gonna be your sympathetic and your parasympathetic. So these are considered to be part of your efferent pathway, except rather than going to skeletal muscle, they're instead going to, you know, smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, or glandular tissue. So I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail with how the, you know, sympathetic and parasympathetic tracks work, but here's, kind of a quick kind of summary about it. So so from T1 to L2 of the spinal cord, rather than having just, you know, dorsal horns, ventral horns, you also have something called lateral horns that stick out in the side here. This is where the sympathetic fibers begin, okay? It's gonna basically come out of here, synapse. And as you guys have learned, so this is gonna be called the sympathetic trunk. Sympathetic trunk. So the first synapse is here. So this is, now we talk about it in terms of, you know, a nerve inside the spinal cord versus a nerve outside of the spinal cord. Any, or a neuron. A cell body within the spinal cord is called a is called a nucleus, and a cell body outside of the spinal cord is called a ganglia. So, right, we talk about dorsal root ganglia. It's a it's a cell body outside of the spinal cord. You know, here is going to be the ganglia. So, this is the preganglionic right before preganglionic nerve. And then after, right, synapses here, it's gonna come out. And this is the postganglionic. And without going into a ton of detail, this is basically gonna release, you know, um, epi and norepi here. This goes to alpha and beta receptors of all your different organs. The big thing I want you to realize is that there's a short preganglionic, goes to the sympathetic trunk and synapses, and there's a long postganglionic. Now the opposite true is, is the opposite is true of the parasympathetic. The parasympathetic, you know, it, it, it doesn't go through the spinal cord. It's it's either here within the brain from cranial nerve three, or it's here, kind of in the kind of um kind of at the tail of the spinal cord. Okay. So let's talk about it here. It's gonna come out, okay? Its first nerve is really long. It's a long, long preganglionic, okay? Goes all the way to the wall of the organ, 
that it's innervating. And then the, and the second one is going to be really short. So here it's going to be acetylcholine instead, just like this. Okay? And this is also going to go to muscarinix. So M1, M3, M5. So something to note is you have nicotinic receptors. So you have nicotinic here, nicotinic here. So that wherever that first synapse is for both your sympathetic and your parasympathetic is nicotinic neural. And then the it's acetylcholine here is the neurotransmitter. So for the most part, it's acetylcholine. For your sympathetic nervous system, it's acetylcholine here at the first synapse, but it's epinephrine and norepinephrine in the second synapse to wherever it, it's headed to. For the parasympathetic, it's gonna be acetylcholine, so they're identical. It's gonna be acetylcholine released, binds here to this you know, postsynaptic receptor, and then it's also acetylcholine again, but now it's binding to muscarinic. And then a, a, a mistake that I said earlier, this is muscarinic muscle, no, it's nicotinic. These are nicotinic receptors, so NM, okay? Nicotinic muscle receptors, my, my apologies for that mistake. So this is basically how the um, kind of, if you want to break down the um, central nervous system, the peripheral nervous system, I think this is an effective way of organizing it. Just to break it down one last time as a review, central nervous system, brain, brain stem, spinal cord, okay? Peripheral nervous system or the central nervous system, this is called sensory or afferent, okay? For the face, it's called the trigeminothalamic, for the sensation of the face, it includes pain, temperature, proprioception, vibration sense, all those sensations are basically done through this pathway. And it goes to the VPM of the thalamus. Now the body, it splits it up. So the dorsal column medial lemniscus takes part of it, the spinal thalamic takes the others, okay? Dorsal column, it goes ipsilateral. It basically goes on the same side of the spinal cord and it crosses at the medulla, right? So it synapses and then decusates here at the medulla and then it goes up to the thalamus and then goes up to the brain. The spinal thalamic is different, even though it's another sensory pathway. It's gonna come up, right? Synapses, then crosses over immediately, and then goes up contralaterally. So this is ipsilateral, because it goes up on the same side of the brain, uh, the same side of the spinal cord, and then crosses at the end. And the spinal thalamic crosses over immediately and goes to the contralateral side. So you think ipsilateral or same-sided deficits, as far as sensory, think dorsal column. If they're contralateral for the most part, think spinal thalamic tract. Now, they get up to the brain, this is in charge of your sensation. Any deficits here are gonna basically manifest themselves as burning, numbness, tingling, pain, all those different sensations that are abnormal are basically derangements within this pathway, within either of these two tracks. Now the motor pathway, right, so your central nervous system communicating to your peripheral nervous system is broken down into your, so we talk about it in terms of face and body. So cortical bulbar is for the face, and these are all the cranial nerves that are innervated, so then that's all the face. Now the body, one track is, in, is responsible for it, and that's gonna be called the corticospinal or pyramidal tract, and it's gonna be involved in movement. So for this one, remember, it goes down, doesn't go through the thalamus, right? Brain doesn't need to talk to the thalamus, it does whatever it wants. So it comes down, 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 it goes to the medulla, it crosses kind of at that bottom part of the medulla, okay? So it crosses here, and then it comes all the way down comes all the way down and out, okay? So it crosses here at the medulla, right? At, specifically at the medullary pyramids. And then it comes down, down, down. Synapses here at the ventral horn, comes out as the lower motor neuron, and then goes to whatever skeletal muscle it's gonna innervate. So this is only, you know, one kind of muscle, right? We have cardiac, we have smooth muscle, we have all these glands. Anything that's gonna be called, considered, you know, visceral, is gonna be done by the sympathetic tracks and the parasympathetic tracks. So these two are not gonna be skeletal muscle, they're gonna be smooth cardiac. These ones instead are gonna basically start, if it's sympathetic, it's from T1 to L2. It starts here within the spinal cord, right? The first nerve comes out, it's a really short preganglionic, synapses, really long postganglionic, and then it releases epinephrine and norepinephrine. Now the parasympathetic 
is the opposite. It's gonna have a really, really long preganglionic, right? The synapse here happens near the body wall. Acetylcholine is released, and then again, here's your postganglionic, and then acetyl acetylcholine is released again. And these are muscarinic receptors, okay? So this is your autonomic nervous system here that's responsible for these, and then this is basically everything that's involved in voluntary movement, okay? Anytime I have a de deficit here, paresthesia, deficits here, per paresis or plegia, right? So any weakness is a deficit in these track in these pathways. It's numbness and tingling is gonna be deficits in this pathway. And the big thing to remember is just where do they cross? Where they synapse is less important because where they cross tells you, okay, is there a deficit, you know, at the same side of the body or the opposite side of the body? And this will basically help you to localize where, um, you know, spinal cord lesions are or nerve lesions or brainstem lesions are. So this is a kind of general overview. You know, go through this a couple of times and break down these different pathways. White matter tracks are these freeways where nerve fibers just run up to the brain and run down. So I think about these just highways that nerves run on. The three tracks that are extremely important for you to know is number one, dorsal column medial lemniscus, two, spinal thalamic, and three, corticospinal. These are your main tracks through the body that basically help you to communicate you know, sensation and, and motor function to the brain and vice versa. Thank you.